lot of people wanted to know, want to know how to join the ending and the beginning um, part of your binding. There are a lot of different ways to do it. I'm going to show you my favorite way. I would have started the beginning tail of my binding with a diagonal cut. It's not too late to do this now. My binding's already sewn on, but I still could go back and make that diagonal cut. I'm opening up the binding and I'm going to place the ruler on here to draw a 45 degree angle. I'm aligning the line of the ruler with the cut edge of the strip and drawing a line. You could go the other way if you want to, it makes no difference at this point. And I'm just going to cut it with scissors right on that line. So I have a good 45 degree angle right here. This is the ending tail of my binding. I'm going to lay it so that the cut edge of the binding is next to the cut edge of the quilt top, and I'm going to open it up. I might want to pin that just to hold it in place so it doesn't shift. And now I'm going to lay on top of that the beginning tail of my binding. And here's my 45 degree cut. I'm going to open that up and draw right along the cut edge of that beginning tail of the binding. Just to be sure I have it a really accurate 45 degree angle, I'm going to place it back on the board here and use my ruler. You don't want to guess at this one. You want to be sure that it's really accurate. So the 45 degree whoops, 45 degree line of the ruler is along the cut edge of the binding and I'm going to extend that line that I already drew. I need to add a seam allowance to these two lines that I drew. So I'm going to add a half an inch to this piece. That'll give me a quarter of an inch seam allowance for this and a quarter of an inch for this one. So here's my ruler. I'm lining up the half inch line of the ruler right on top of the line I drew, and I'm drawing again. Sometimes I, I want to be absolutely sure I'm adding a half an inch to it, so I've been known to draw an arrow. You want it a half an inch larger than the line you drew, not less. So an arrow can help you if you're not sure you're going to get it right. So I'm going to cut on that second line that I drew, the line that's adding a half an inch to the first drawn line. And now I just want to sew these two strips together. Um, because they are 45 degree angles, I'm going to align them with a quarter of an inch of the end of that, that pointed strip sticking out and I'm going to pin it. And I'm going to pin the other end too. When you sew your quarter of an inch seam allowance, it should go from that intersection of that point in the strip to the intersection of this. So now I need to go and sew a, a quarter inch seam allowance right along here. So that, now I've sewn that quarter inch seam along that diagonal cut. And you can see from this side, there's the drawn line a quarter of an inch away from where I'd sewn. I'm going to now finger press that open. This helps reduce the bulk. And I like doing this final binding join so that it looks just like all the other joins in the quilt. Fold this in half and pin this and then you can just go ahead and finish sewing the edge of this last bit of your binding. That's how I like to do my binding. I'm Sherry Driver from McCall's Quilting Associate Editor. Give this a try and see if this binding works as well for you as it does for me.